to the youth of this city. I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies that will develop structural and systemic changes for generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. Wow. You know, the more I hear that, the more I, I just can't believe what I'm hearing. Uh, joining us now is Joseph uh, Concannon, president of Integra Security LLC, retired NYPD captain, 21 years, former deputy director of public safety for Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Good to see you again, sir. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good, good. You know, uh, now more than ever with uh, prosecutors like that and uh, with what's going on in cities around the country and, of course, the tragic uh, horrific uh, murder of a New York City police officer a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is a very important week. It's National Police Week. It certainly is, Steve. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a time of the year where we get one, one week, one week to really look back and reflect on what's been going on around the nation with law enforcement. And, you know, your viewers may be interested to hear, uh, it shocks some people sometimes, 117 uniformed police officers died in the line of duty last year. I mean, that's, that's something really to think about and take that in. It takes the breath of some people away. It is, it is outrageous. Uh, and, you know, it, it, you hear routine traffic stop. There's no such thing as a routine traffic stop. You hear unarmed. They shot an unarmed man. Well, th that doesn't even enter into it because you don't know they're unarmed until they're cuffed and in custody and they're searched. If they pose a threat, you have to assume as an officer that they're armed, right? Well, you do. You know, we've seen three specific incidents that have come up lately, one in Jamaica, Queens, at 168th Street and Hillside Avenue, where the officers heard shots fired and they did not w uh, draw their weapons until the weapon was actually drawn at them, and then they finally shot. So they held back. You know, we saw this incident now uh, uh, with Brian Moore, and, you know, uh, just, a, just a stop. You know, they wanted to question the guy, find out what was going on. The guy turns around and shoots him. All right, if they had been maybe a little bit more aggressive, you know, maybe they would have had a chance, maybe just a chance. But it's, it's this whole environment that's going on. Today, we see a uniformed police officer with a, the hammer attack here in Midtown Manhattan. Thankfully, no, uh, no Th cop was hurt and the thank, assailant was shot. Thank God. Yep. All right. But, you know, if, if, if maybe they were looking at it a little more aggressively, you mm -hmm. know, and saying, hey, hold on a second, this is the guy. All right. And then maybe one of them stands back a little bit and says, hey, you. Right. All right. Stop. Well, are, are, are police being put in a position now, do you think, where they're more hesitant? I mean, I've heard reports of that happening in Baltimore. And, you know, in Baltimore, uh, since the curfew was lifted, there have been, I think, four murders and 12 shootings. And these are black people getting murdered. And nobody t says boo about any of that. Yeah, you know, it, it's a shame what's happening in Baltimore, what happened in Baltimore, you know, over the last couple of weeks. It's been a national disgrace. And, you know, just as, a, as an aside, to have a Baltimore Orioles game, and no one in the stands, that's a national yeah, embarrassment for, right for our pastime. Absolutely right. But, you know, uh, w nobody talks about the murders in Chicago. Nobody talks about the murders in Baltimore. And nobody's really talking about the murders that are happening here in New York City. Shootings because are up and everything. Shootings yep. are up 33% in some areas. All right. And these are the neighborhoods who can least afford mm -hmm. to def defend themselves. The very, the very people who need the police. You know, when Ray Kelly was the commissioner here in New York City, he talked about the 7,000 lives that were saved. Well, these are some of the very lives now that are being taken. Yep. And it, it, it is, it's very, it's very they're sad. They're minority lives, and they, they're, they they're the elderly that are being attacked in minority areas. It's terrible. And again, back to National Police Week. And, and, and you've done such great work throughout the year. Uh, and now uh, there's a, a march uh, in, in Queens, New York. Yeah. For anybody who uh, wants to participate tonight, 7 to 9 p.m. Sure. We, we'd love to invite the community to come out. Uh, what we're doing is we're having a community march in Queens Village, uh, which is going to start on Springfield Boulevard and 93rd Avenue. We're asking people to assemble at 7 p.m. And then we will uh, we'll, uh, take off at, at 7.30. We'll march up Springfield Boulevard, down Hillside, and then down Braddock Avenue. Back down to 222nd Street, which is the, uh, the home of the 10, 105 Precinct, the uh, Officer Moore's Precinct. And then what we're going to do is 8.30, we'll hold uh, another assembly down there because some people who can't march will, mm -hmm. will assemble then. And we'll hold uh, a very, very uh, nice uh, vigil, you know, something very quiet, 
something very, very respectful, and something that we can really think about. As the citizens who live in that community, there's such an outpouring of love to those cops over at the Absolutely. 105. The community just loves them to death. And something very important, uh, made more important and magnified because of what's going on. And this is a, an outgrowth uh, of the uh, National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, right? It is, and that's, and that's the one reason why I picked tonight to do it. And the reason behind it, Steve, was simply uh, the, uh, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, is specifically their CEO, Craig Floyd, is a great guy. If you've ever had a chance to talk to him, all right. They do uh, the National uh, Candlelight Vigil tonight. It's beautiful. It's a sea of lights with some of the families from the fallen and police officers from across the country. And it really gives us chance to, to think about, you know, the sacrifices that police officers do each and every day. My thought here in New York, all right, not everybody can make it down to Washington. Right, so have it here. So have it here. Yeah. And, and of course, we got less than a minute. When the president sends three representatives to Michael Moore's funeral and none to the slain New York City officer's funeral, that, that talks about why you need this kind of uh, outpouring. Well, we, we are that lone voice that's out there right now, and we were asking the New York community to get out. Get out in front of your commands tonight and have a moment of silence. You bring a flashlight, wear a blue shirt, all right, stand out in front of your commands like you did during 9-11 and let the cops in the city of New York and throughout the nation, quite frankly, know that you really do care about what they do. Website? Uh, uh, HTTP colon slash slash SQ hyphen deal dot com. Deal dot com. All right. Always good to see you, Joseph. Thank Steve, you very much. Thank you. All right, folks, we're coming back. Uh, don't go away. Uh, we will be joined by Ian Tuttle.